is giving no space to the devil part one It is called what? Giving no space to the devil, part one. Now let's read the scripture, John 10 verse 10. All right? The Bible says, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. How many here? ever experienced one of these three things where they maybe may experience some form of destruction where the enemy came to destroy their lives, property, relationships, marriages, family. The devil came to destroy what they do. If anyone else ever experienced any form of destruction, I want to see your hand up because I may be preaching to a wrong congregation. All right. Now, anyone else who experienced any form of of killing whether the enemy came to kill somebody in your family to kill you or to kill your life or to kill you what you do or to kill your plans or to kill your future or just to cause death to anything i want you to raise up a hand if you ever experience that the enemy has been trying to kill something around me now i want to say this i am talking to the right congregation because what i have brought for you is going to put a stop to this harassment of the enemy. I'm telling you, I can promise you this. We're stopping the enemy tonight and he will never come again to do this. Now the Bible says he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Oh, glory be to God. But I have come, now that's Jesus, that I may give you life and the life in abundance. You hear that? Now, let's just see this. Now, let's go in Ephesians 4 verse 27. And do not give, do not give who? The devil a foothold. In NIV, it says a foothold. In King James Version, it says, Neither give bless to the devil. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just hear that statement? God is not saying, and, and I like this, on that scripture, the Lord is revealing something. It's not like the devil will not come to you. It says, do not give him the authority and the permission to allow him to have a space somewhere in your life or not to have the space belongs to you. You can accept him to have the authority, to have the space, or you can deny him that access. Come on, someone say, access denied. Mama roke para mandere diga faha. Roshantaka para mando zika pahatos. Somebody say, access denied. Hear me. Now, so I was thinking, I said, but why? You know, one time I was thinking, like, why does God allow certain things to happen to people? Did you hear me? So you be thinking, why is the devil allowing things to happen around me? Why are all these things happening around me? You might have given him what? Space. You might give him a foothold. Do you know a foothold? What it means? A foothold, it means a slight space. Your foothold, not even a foothold, he must be given. Go back to the scripture in King James Version. It says, neither give space. The word space in Greek is the word topon. Someone said topon. Topon. The word topon means an opportunity. Makato Rabah. Can you imagine? The authority to deny him access belongs to you. There are seven spaces that you must never give the devil. How many? 
there are seven types of topon. Seven places you must never give the devil. Never give the devil these seven places. So tonight, we'll be looking at the space of your finances. Do not give the devil your financial space. Come on. Did you hear me? Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor right now. Say neighbor. Do not give the devil a space in your finances. Hey. Do you know why? Because when he has a little space, he will kill, he will steal, and he will destroy. So we have people right now who they do have opportunities financially, but nothing is going on. Because they, there's a space the devil is having in their finances. Somehow he is penetrating. Somebody say, out. Do not give the devil a foothold. Do not give the devil a space. We're about to command something to happen here. No, no, no. I say we're about to command something to happen right now. Somebody say, hear you, prophet. Come on, say louder. Say, hear you, prophet. All right. How do you know that I think I have given the devil space? An opportunity. The word space there is the word topon, which means what? Opportunity. And the Bible says, do not give the devil an opportunity. Now, can you imagine, can you imagine this, that you wake up in the morning and you have a lot of bills to pay and you can't pay them because you do not have finances. Wait a minute, okay, so you try to do this and then the devil steals your business. And you try this and the devil kills your, your opportunity. And you try this, the devil comes to steal your career, to steal your job, to steal your what, to steal your what. And then all you do is to become a victim. All you do is become a victim. Do you know there is no single day God came from heaven and he said, I have come to fight for the nation of Israel. He never. It took men. It took men who said, we will go in the name of God. Oh, you didn't hear me. It was men in Israel who would rise up and say, we are going in the name of the Lord. When they, when they win the battle, God was saying, I fought for you. Oh, you didn't hear me. God was saying what? I fought for you. I fought for you. So it's not like God will be like, okay, all of you stand here. Then God comes down. Poof, and he stands in front of them. And he says, let's fight now. Like, hey, we saw God. He was moving in front of us and he had a knife. And he began to cut people's heads. They had to do something. Even for the walls of Jericho to collapse. Yes, it's not the Israelites who pushed them down. It was God who pushed them down. But they had to do something. They had to march around them. They had to sing. They had to blow trumpets. They had to do something about it. Because hear me, for your walls to collapse, for the devil to leave your finances, you must do something. You must command that devil out. You must tell him out of my money, out of my finances, out of my job, out of my career, out of my business, out in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, do not give him what? An opportunity. Set upon. Which means? The Bible says, do not what? Imagine him even penetrating in your little business. He's there. I'm talking about a small business. I'm talking about a very small business. And somebody is working and you are getting already a small salary. In that salary, the devil is also in there. So the Bible says, do not give you an opportunity. Now, how? How? In James 4 verse 7, the Bible says, I want us to see here. 
Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will free from you. Wait a minute. Is God saying, is God saying that he's going to take the devil out of you? What, what is he saying? Now, when he's coming in your finances, what must you do? But are, are you seeing this? That people, when the devil is coming so strong in their finances, strongly, what do they do? They begin to say, you know, I'm passing through a lot. God is not waiting for you to say you're passing through a lot. And the difference between believers is one. We have other believers who confront the devil and the others don't. The Bible is not saying do not give the devil just space. It says not even a foothold. Not even an opportunity. He must never be found anywhere in your finances. We are only dealing with the finances tonight. Tell the neighbor next to you, if you have a neighbor, tell the neighbor to say from now, I will never give the devil an opportunity. Say not again. In my finances. Say not again. Not again. Say I rebuke the enemy. I rebuke he the will enemy. never again. He will never again. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But have you seen it? The Bible says the power to do it. It says it's in you. It says resist. And he will free. And we, we don't want him just to live. Like, oh, Papa, I'm delivered. Yet he's somewhere in your money. Yeah, you are delivered, but he's actually still in your money. He's there. He's still affecting you. So we have people who are delivered in church. Demons left them, but demons are in their money now. Demons are in their business. Demons are in their, in their marriage. We're not saying that. We're talking about completely no any space. No any opportunity. No any foothold. In every area of your family, every area of your finances, of your life, no food hot. There'll be no more space. Prophesy that loud. I say there'll be no more space. Ever seen a lion physically or in a movie or on a picture? Ever seen a lion? Now, let me tell you about a lion. If you put a lion in a cage that is fortified with the trees, you put poles around, and you put a lion inside, no matter how strong it may be, what a lion begins to do, a lion begins to hit the poles. It will hit here. It will see how strong it is. It will go another direction. And we hit this area, so the lion will keep on hitting. We'll keep on hitting, and we'll go back to where the lion had started. Then it starts again, until where one paw begin to shake. The lion now knows I have found a place. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes. I have now found what? The lion will spend the whole night just hitting that area. Hitting that area. And begin to shake even more. Keep on hitting that area. Hitting that area. Fighting that area. Until the lion breaks through. You come in the morning, you won't find the lion in the cage. Because there was one weak area. What the devil does around you. He's, he knows how strong you are. And he keeps on hitting things. He keep on checking. The Bible says he rose like a lion, seeking whom? Like a lion. Seeking. So he behaves like a lion. He hits all weak places, like way, 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 way. So when he sees, oh, come on, this woman, she's weak financially, he will spend his own night in your finances. And I'm telling you, no matter how tongues you speak, no matter how prayerful you pray, no matter how giving you give. But my friend, if you give the devil a foothold, if you give him an opportunity, he will, he will finish you. 
He will finish you. So you'll be wondering what's going on. I pray, I speak in tongues, I go to church, but what happens? You have so many things around you that he's actually tearing apart financially. Raise your right hand. And he says, I raise my hand. I, raise my hand. I submit to God. I, submit to God. I, resist I resist the devil. Somebody say amen. amen. Hear me. I'm telling you I'm a prophet. The devil must never be given what? An opportunity. We must tell him where he must go. I'm telling you. Listen to me. Listen. The devil is not the opposite of God. Do you know the devil was created? How can the created be the opposite of the creator? God has no opposite. God has no equal. He's incomparable. He has no equal. The devil is the opposite of an angel of God, Michael. You didn't hear me. They were all created. He was an angel. He's an opposite of a, of a good angel. He's a fallen angel. He's not even in the, in the rank of God to be compared with God. You can't compare the devil with God. Like, oh, he's opposite of God. Are you sure? In fact, he's opposite of you. <laughs> In fact, it's the opposite. We were all created. God created us and he created him. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? He isn't the opposite of God. He's not. But guess what? Listen to me. Guess what? He knows. He has been around. He knows how to destroy people. We have people right now watching me and somewhere here. And if I may check your bank account, very sad. And there are people now who actually are drinking and are smoking and are doing all manner of evil and have $30 million in their account. And because the devil is telling you it's okay for you to live like that, you have accepted it and for you it's okay. Not me. Uh, not me. If as long as my God is alive, something must happen to me. How do you accept that? You see, I, I told people around me, I said, if, they, if there is one thing I, I will never allow, is to see somebody who is not a believer to live better than me. Never. No, not when I'm alive. If, if money is finished, I'll go to the mountain, I'll pray it out. I'm telling you. I will, re I will resist that devil until he comes out of my business. I will rebuke that devil until he packs and go. I'm telling you. I will, I will hear me. I will, I will smoke that devil out. I wake up like this. There's no money. The following day, there's no money. What am I doing? And I'm okay. And I have accepted it. And it's fine. Ah, uh, wh What's the whole meaning of being a believer? What's the whole meaning? What's the whole meaning of speaking in tongues? I will smoke that devil. I'll, I will command that devil. Every lightning in the world, I will direct it to, to that devil that is holding my money. You see what the Bible says? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 45, okay, God says to Cyrus from verse 1, 2, 3, to my anointed servant, Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him <laughs> and to strip kings of their armor to open doors before him. He says, God has anointed Cyrus to subdue nations, to humble kings, and to open the gates. God is not saying he's going to open the gate. He says, I have anointed you to do it. Amen. Check verse 3. I will give you hidden what? Treasures. I was talking to some people earlier on today. I said, do you know how many treasures of you are hidden? And who is hiding them? I'm telling you, who is hiding them? God says, your, your money which has been hidden, I shall give it to you. Who was hiding it? 
Now, God is telling Sarah, I'll give you the hidden treasures. Meaning that Sarah had some money which was supposed to come to him, but was what? Was hidden. Now, how many believers today, they are so broke because the devil is hiding their money? Somebody say, you devil, I command you out. <laughs> say, you have no space in my finances. <laughs> say louder, you have no space in my finances. <laughs> say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> like, oh, life is not okay. No, no, not in a prophetic ministry. We come against you. <laughs> We come against you. The people of Israel, the people of Israel, for any battle they ever won, they had to go against their enemy. Whether they fought it with their hands or not, but they had to take a direction to where the enemy was. If you ever want to win any battle, face your enemy. Tell him what will happen. So tonight we are giving no any foothold. <laughs> 